Hello everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Andrelzic Amusement Academy. Uh, so today we are going to go um, less focused on the uh, variety that we usually do on the weekends, and instead we are going to go uh, and focus specifically on one type of coaster, that type of coaster being the Gerslauer Bobsled Coaster. So the reason we're looking at this one tonight is uh, Dirk Link had reached out to me uh, and said that he is doing a mini contest uh, for um, the next two weeks or so, I think. And the contest is to build a Gerslauer bobsled coaster. So uh, he had asked if I was interested in doing a video talking about the varieties that are out there and uh, what there are, um, what kind of options there are and how to do them in RCT. So that's what we're going to do. Hey Mav, welcome in. Thank you for joining. So, um, what I wanted to do is basically just go through all the ones that exist. There's only 14, so it's not that many. And then we're going to build, like, I don't know, two or three examples and take questions and all that fun stuff. So, um, as we have grown accustomed to doing, let's start on the coaster database. So, like I said, there are 14 different Gerslauer bobsled coasters. What is a Gerslauer bobsled coaster. It is essentially a wild mouse with wild mouse with extras. It's got wild mouse type corners, uh, those flat type corners. It's got um, four seater cars, but it's also got banked drops, kind of diving turns, um, some pretty kind of steep inclines, and high banking in some spots. So it's really kind of a mix of like a small kind of little aggressive coaster. Uh, and a um, kind of family wild mouse. Uh, hey, Emil, how are you? Uh, and we are really kind of settled in on the family coaster aspect of this ride. Although, to be honest, they can be pretty peppy. They're a lot of fun, in, in my opinion. I've done three of the 14, um, and, I'm, and I enjoyed the heck out of them. Like, I, I really think these coasters are underrated. I wish we had one in the U.S., but we don't. They're all in Asia and Europe, which is weird. But, um, you know, I'm hoping one day we'll see one over here in the States. So anyway, there are four kind of standard models that Gerslauer offers, and then there are a couple of custom sets. So let's go through them. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, Jacinta Sal, um, which is the very first one of these. Actually, Gerslauer's first coaster in general. Um, so if we kind of go through the pictures here, uh, you know what, actually, instead of doing that, let's just jump to the tape and see if we can find a Coaster Force 1, which we will. So I was informed by my friends at Coaster Force the other day that when I upload these to YouTube, they actually get uh, requests uh, if they want to copyright strike my videos. And uh, thankfully, because we are friends, uh, they have uh, declined. But uh, that means I'm just going to use the Coaster Force videos from now on. But anyway, uh, let's uh, let's take a look. So these have um, chain lift hills, uh, though in some cases they also have tire drives. Um, but what we are going to look at here is kind of the <clears throat> the more varied aspects of the layout. So let's uh, take a look here as we approach the top. Keep in mind these are little tiny 4C cars. Notice that little flat bit at the top of the lift hill. A nice diving corner right off the bat as we come up so it's got a pretty exciting start and then we get into this wild mouse section here where um, we're gonna go through these flat corners some great theming here trips drill does awesome theming just in general this is one of the three that I've written and it's a lot of fun interacts with the log flume as well but so after that section of those then you start getting into these diving corners again so you got this great diving corner right here, transitioning quickly to this one. Uh, a lot of tight transitions like that, but they're really smooth on the whole. Lots of block breaks, as you can see, because they are individual little cars. And then we get to these little bunny hops, which Tripstro has built up onto the landscape, or built the landscape up around, I suppose. Another open block break there. Find a little diving down here into these opposing helixes, and then up into the breaks here at the end. Um, so this was copied once over, so there's this one here, and then you can see sliding transfer track also. Um, then there was also um, a second one of these uh, up in uh, Denmark here in Dejur's Summerland, 
which is the same layout, other kind of simple theming, but kind of does the same does the same deal. Not not too much difference. Um, so kind of the next one that they put together was a pretty similar variety. This is Cobra at Paltons Park in the UK. Um, you can see the whole thing right here. I mean, it's not very big. They're they're pretty small rides on the whole. Um, but uh, you can see the little cars there. I banked Helix. So this is pretty much the same layout as the other one, just doesn't have the Helix at the, at the end. Um, but you can see these little tiny hills. Again, they've mounted up some of the hills here just to make it the natural terrain, just to make it a little more interesting, which I think is cool. Um, but so those are uh, two of the, the first kind of models that came out. And then there are two more um, kind of standard models. So Aqua Wind is the first one. And uh, this layout actually comes in a spinning variety also. Um, which uh, I've also ridden. That's at Bon Bon Land in Denmark. But uh, this is the standard Grislauer bobsled version. Um, and we'll give this a try. Hopefully, Mr. Purple Finale will not copyright strike this. But let's uh, take a look here. Uh, again, this park is another one that's got some great theming. And I know Mavericks is well aware of this one since he's ridden it. And uh, I've gone and done this one too. Um, Great little coaster, um, great theming. This park in general is pretty cool. It's got some underrated dark rides as well, or just some unknown dark rides. Really steep first drop there, though. Take a look at that, kind of up into this flat corner here. A couple of these little flat bits. Great theming all around. Yeah, the park is really weird. It's... Crazy log flume, forwards, backwards, very wet. Um, I think what gets me about these bobsled coasters, and we're going on a downward helix here that's indoors, uh, is the amount of quick, tight transitions that look like they should really throw you around but are actually done incredibly well, um, especially compared to some of Grislauer's earlier um, not-so-great attempts. So... I, I'm a huge fan of these layouts just because they do what they do very smoothly, um, despite the, the size. Okay, and then the last little one is, uh, there's two of these. One of them is at Motion Gate Park in uh, Abu Dhabi, or actually in Dubai. And then the other one has just recently opened at uh, Tasmania Lofing. Uh, I saw this one test, and I missed it by like a couple of weeks, so unfortunate. But uh, we'll look at this one just because it's going to be more visible. This is another little tight variety here. This one's almost like you took a wild mouse plot and just made the wild mouse more interesting. So that's um, that's kind of what you, you're going for, especially in a compact variety of these. Um, so definitely a, a tighter form, but you can kind of see all these undulating hills and things like that, but you're still squeezing in the block breaks here in the middle and then also at the end. All right, so let's get into one of these before we really delve into the custom ones. So might as well begin here. So first things first is you need two uh, two kinds of track to do this typically. Um, I've seen it done with one, but uh, if we're going by the rules on uh, Dirkling's contest, uh, you have to have a uh, tight wild mouse style corner that's at least 180 degrees. You need at least one of those, and then you also need a set of banked corners. So that requires us to use both the uh, mini coaster and also the wild mouse. In general, I feel like you can get away without using the wild mouse um, on these if you want it to make it look kind of nice and RCT, but you know, it's not required. You, you can kind of go either way. I find that a little bit extra space, I'd rather make it appear wider than thinner um, just from a theming standpoint when you do the supports. But that said, you know, he can uh, dictate what he wants as the contest. So uh, we're going to build one with a wild mouse type uh, corner in there and see how it looks. So what I'm starting out with here is uh, both an entry and an exit station. Since these guys have the single um, uh, single car uh, or single car vehicles, um, we want to have as many blocks as we can get on here just to really up the capacity. So we have an entrance station and an exit station, and then I'm going to put a block before the lift hill also just to give it a little bit more more space. All right, so we're not gonna go very high. These are actually pretty small rides typically. Um, so we'll get to here. We're gonna put one flat bit at the top um, just because that one's got a, um, 
This is sort of the chain release portion. And then we're gonna jump off right away and uh, go down into a diving corner of sorts. And now we just gotta figure out what kind of diving corner of sorts we want to do. Like a little helix of some type. So that actually works from a clearance standpoint, which is kind of nice and gets us to where we need to be. So what we can do, come out here and do like a uh, flat corner in this regard and then come up and do some of these wild mouse corners. Now the thing with these is you don't really want to get into the wild or you don't want to put your break at the beginning of the wild mouse corners unless you're going to have a little dip in there. Uh, which I'm going to, so I can put one here. Um, but what we're going to do, since we've got all the cheats enabled, is go into here and turn this to... Uh, let's just do Steel Wild Mouse. Go pop, pop. Drop one of these guys here. And then let's go back to Mini Roller Coaster. All right, so there's uh, sort of our little switchback. Um, we can actually go ahead and give this another one here just to give it a little bit more space. Um, kind of have check off the box of that sort of flat, lateral, heavy, wild mouse type corner before we get back into it. Uh, mini coaster. The challenge that you have in general with the look of these rides is that the um, the Wild Mouse track is a smaller gauge than the Mini Coaster track, so it's not going to look quite the same, or quite as good in my opinion, but um, it's still a thing, uh, so not, not too awful, um, but it, just, it stands out a little bit. I'm actually kind of rethinking how I want to do this, so... I think maybe we're gonna go since we are at nine here we were at 12 there probably get up just a little bit more if we even want to now that said we need to look at this from a momentum standpoint you have to keep in mind that since we have the single that right now single car vehicle these do lose momentum quite a bit faster than your standard full train heavy full of guests sort of thing but let's make sure that we're not going to run out of, of juice here and you can see we are we're barely going to make it so that answers that question right there Let's see if that dip is required. If it is, then we can keep with it. Otherwise, that dip's going to be required. Okay. Fine. We can definitely make do with that. Actually, we can even shorten it up just a little bit like this. And look at an option here where... We're going to take our Steel Wild Mouse. And depending on the clearances here if we can't get something that's going to fit through here, which we can't, because it just isn't going to want to play. Oop. All right, back it up and think again. So we do know that 
we can kind of have ourselves set here and if we do this as a downward helix then we're going to have a little bit more space to do some other things here so let's just keep this like it was and we will do our block break right here turn turn dip turn, turn. And then here is where we will our next little diving corner coming along. I realize I'm putting this on the ground, so we're going to have to figure out what we want to do with that here in a little bit. But <clears throat> seven, which means we're probably not going to make that. But let's take a look. Momentum is honestly going to be your biggest challenge with these because these rides or these vehicles are so light. Yep. You kind of have to watch out for that in general. You can see how fast we ate up all the speed that we had initially set up in there. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with a straight drop either, so that's something that you can do. We're going to be allowed to get away with that. Probably be our next block break right here, actually. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> Wish there was like an override button. Yeah, the Green Hornet layout is, is really nice. That was the same as that Tatsmania Lolfing in one that we looked at. Uh, it's a really nice little compact layout. <clears throat> Hard to do an RCT because it's got a little a lot of nuanced little changes in there. Um, <clears throat> but it's still a pretty cool layout in my opinion. There we go. Uh, just Just barely, but we'll take it. And you can do these as flat corners if you want um, for some of these little bits, which is kind of what I'm looking at here. Like this guy here could be flat, which is interesting. The other challenge you've got are these block breaks. Now, granted, you like to see block breaks because... Um, you want to be able to run multiple cars. Now, you can cheat at that a little bit. You can put some chain lift pieces if you raise up and into the chain. Um, that's that's a good way to cheat it, but I would recommend that over just using continuous circuit mode. 20 will be tough, though. I mean, you're right. It's um, I, I was kind of thinking that when I saw the requirements that, geez, that is a tight, tight space. So it's going to be really difficult to get that working right in uh, that kind of short amount of space. That is a lot to um there's a lot to fit in there. Hmm. Figure out a good way to continue this across.
we probably wanted to do here is earn this. That way we can bound it down here at the end, like have a little turnaround. We go to the oil mouse, what that overall height is. That is five, which means that I don't think we're going to make it. Actually, we do. So the thing is, with a lot of these, you have these sort of steep hills. I don't necessarily recommend um, the steep hills with the the base portion being steep i kind of recommend going uh low slope into a steep slope and then like the tight corner on top or the tight adjustment on top but you know, for the purposes of this this may not be a bad idea and that way you can get a couple of them in there A hex. So we'll go ahead and do that actually, and then we can also just go do more and line up a nice block break underneath the other block break, so that works. Though I have just Filed into the their track here. Not ideal. Yeah, it could very easily go unbanked. Uh, this one here. I kind of like the idea of the transition into it, but uh, the speed the speed itself definitely dictates that it could stay. Stay unbanked. So I do not disagree with you there. Mm. That's, we would need to be down at two in order to get away from that one. Kind of like how that all lines up down the down the line there, but is a slightly annoying thing that we are running into. <laughs> How do we want to do it? We'll just do a corner like this. And we will do flat first, then banked. Then we'll do unbanked. Of course, we're also running into this one over here, which is fine. We can they will take a block here at the end. Question is if it's going to make that up that slope. Hopefully, it will. Oh, interesting. And into that one.
going to build our way backwards here. Um, decide how we want to finish it. Go ahead and put in our eel, wild mouse stuff. We will build backwards as you do. I almost recommend building these at uh, half height just because you can see how low they sink compared to the other parts of the ride. So it's not quite the best look. But if you go through there and consider doing half height, I mean, because this is dummy track anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just uh, get ourselves a color at least. Turn this off so we know that we can. Make it properly. Actually, doesn't look the worst, to be honest, to kind of come out and out and back like that. Although, I think if you were doing some hills here you could consider doing those also in the wild mouse style just so you don't um, have the wild mouse one sticking out on the one side and then you have the little hills on the other side actually what I think we'll do is try to see if we can't oh it is in the way shoot Gonna see if we could duck underneath the one hill and then go back over the other one, but alas, we cannot. <clears throat> no issues there, though. You can do some kind of, you can do weird banking stuff if you want as far as like hills go. Um, we can do some of this like almost RMC-esque weirdness. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and just end this so then we can keep on moving along. We'll do some other ones here. I don't necessarily say that these are going to be the best the first time around, so we're not we're not trying for that. <laughs> no, Sarah. Uh, I'm, I may. We'll see. All right. Let's look at five to start. Like we said, this does use the um, <clears throat> the block breaks as actual block breaks, which I think is something you should do, but not necessary. And these cars do lose speed like crazy. Um, I've also seen uh, wooden coasters uh, used, which I'm not a huge fan of. You can use the the little mine, uh, the wooden mine cars, um, or the not wooden mine cars, but the, the like mine wild mouse type cars. Ideally, there'd be a nice little helix right there. That's the other thing that you can do is you can set the ride mass um, to something crazy. If you want to do that instead. Um, but you'll notice where I've had the block breaks is that they're all spaced out so that we can keep running the ride before anybody stops. So this one got through there before he black car got to there. Or the peach car got to there so that way you're able to keep on moving so this guy is just getting clear here while he just comes up to here while he just comes up to here 
So that's your that's the key of how to do block breaks. So you need to make sure that you're not going to stop the stop the ride. But anyway, that's uh that's first attempt. Let's um go look at the some of the custom ones that were done. We'll slide over so we get rid of the chain lift sound here. All right, back to the widest breadth of the rest of these are um custom rides and these range pretty dramatically actually through different types so the first one and kind of a standard overall design is Draken Rita at Volantis which is pretty much the same deal as we had at the other one so it's pretty much a standard kind of layout um some theming not a whole heck of a lot going on um but we get a little bit more interesting as we go along so this is uh, a Hasifart, uh, which is um, uh, at Kloten uh, in uh, north, uh, northeast, or, no, northwest Germany. Um, this one's a pretty interesting one, too, because I'd say this is probably one of the more extreme versions of the ride. Uh, it's got some pretty interesting stuff because of future theming that was going around it. So the thing was made to have this uh, little mountaintop built over the thing. You can see here um, which has not come just yet they do have a water ride over top of it now which is pretty cool um, but there's this uh, this great set of hills at the end one two three four in a row which is pretty cool and then this hill here I want to see if I can get a better shot of you can kind of see this little like weird curved airtime hill as you land down there it's a pretty wild uh, looking corner especially after having dropped through this giant helix here so, um, pretty interesting, pretty intense. Here's that little bump. Um, so while they are family coasters, they don't have to be all family. You can throw in some pretty intense stuff there. So here's, here's one of those options. All right, so continuing on with the custom ones, there's a, a couple other varieties. So uh, Van Helsing's Factory is maybe one that... Uh, kind of forget about uh, it's all inside um, but we can take a look at the layout diagram here we've got two separate lift hills and some dark ride stuff in the middle so that's why you have some show scenes in the middle that's a good way if you want to incorporate the wild mouse corners but you don't want to have them as part of your uh, main coaster layout do them as part of the dark ride section and or a scenic um, story driven ride and, and do it that way there's not much to this layout, as you can see, but it's indoors, and it, this is definitely a solid family coaster, but uh, pretty interesting nonetheless. Okay, so a couple more here, and now we get into some more interesting stuff. Um, Vildemusen is, is maybe one of my favorite uh, looking ones. I would love to ride this. This is a bucket list coaster because there's uh, the Schwarzkopf coaster jetline that's uh, sitting here, and uh, Grunelon decided to take this ride and weave it through the existing uh, ride. So uh, I built one like this in the game, and before we leave the stream today, we're going to end on that just so I can kind of show an example of how one looks with some full theming on it. And granted, it's custom scenery, which is not allowed in the Dirkling contest, but gives you an idea. So you can kind of see here that massive knot of uh, kind of ice blue track that's uh, the Schwarzkopf coaster, and then you've got the dark blue that weaves in and out as the uh, wild or the bobsled coaster. So you can kind of see how they're almost one and the same here, using similar supports and all sorts of uh, fun stuff. But it's a pretty cool looking ride. Um, let me see if Coaster Force has a POV. Uh, they do. Uh, let's take a look at this. Along now. Uh, we're not going to watch a Trump ad. Nope, nope, nope. That's gross. All right, there we go. Apologies for that. So let's take a look at something way better than Trump. This coaster. <clears throat> So you can see too just the cool theming and, and stuff like that around this one where it sort of breaks through the different walls. 
Um, pretty big lift hill actually on this one, uh, a little bigger than some of the other ones. But I like this because the layout's different and it's pretty, pretty unique. You're kind of hanging off the existing coaster. You have these cool little swoopy corners that are interspersed with these wild mouse type tight corners here. But like those switchbacks weren't parallel to each other, which is something you can consider. And it doesn't have to be very fast. I mean, you look at this, this is easing through some of those banked corners back to flat now again. And it transitions very easily back and forth to these. So we're going to do these couple of hills and we're going to have a few flat corners here while we go around and get situated for some more banking. Here's a helix fully up above a guest pathway. Pretty cool as it comes into the brakes here. Really neat. Overall design, I think it's a cool, cool looking ride. Okay, and there's three more now that we will look around at. Um, so, uh, Speed Rockets was relatively new. Uh, this was 2018. This is the other one of the three that I've ridden. So, this is in Paris. Um, has two lift hills, and um, it's pretty straightforward, but it's got some cool, like, uh, unique elements i suppose so right here in front it's a little hard to see here in the in the picture but this is the first drop off of the one lift hill and it's got this little double dip down this little shallow dip and then suddenly a steep dip into this um kind of strangely banked corner there's also like this corner right here which is almost completely banked at 90 degrees that's uh, probably a good 80 something degrees there so it's a really steep looking ride. i mean you can see it there um very easy uh, in the way that it gets taken, but um, it's still a pretty unique, interesting overall design. Let's see some of the concept art for it, but really good, really good coaster. Fits that park really well. And then uh, two more here. So um, Rotten Mull um, in uh, Family Park in Austria. I'm a huge fan of this one too because it's a long one uh, as far as ride goes now granted it's not very long it's 1400 feet but it is one of the longer one of these um but it's more um more coaster than a more regular coaster than wild mouse i suppose um so we can see some of the more uh here we go this is a decent shot of it more diving corners um you'll notice some transitions here um that use the tri rail track so that's another strategy if you want to impress uh, for some of the areas that uh, don't need as many supports or that need longer spans or whatever you can use the tri-rail track rather than the mini coaster by rail track and there are still the wild mouth sections with the brakes and everything like that but um, a pretty pretty nice fit throughout and then um, look at uh, Tiki Waka which is one of the more recent ones as well. This one's 2018. This one is more coaster than anything. There's a couple of flat bits, but it's uh, largely up above the path for one. It's one of the tallest of the bobsled coasters and one of the longest. Uh, you can kind of see the height there, uh, but none of the drops really get all the way down to the ground. They kind of alternate uh, or stay up above, kind of floating above the pathway in general. So kind of a neat, neat design overall, I think, but it's a pretty, Probably one of the more unique approaches. Let's see if <laughs> let's look at the Wallaby Belgium POV. You know, adds this stuff. So great looking ride, and you can see here just looking up that lift hill how big the thing is. It is massive. A nice little almost mini launch up this lift hill too. Pretty fast, um, fast pull. As we level up on the top, so here's our layout, which you can kind of see just sitting up above. There's a nice little kind of swoopy corners. 
you can feel a little bit of um, Fire Chaser Express and Pegasus Express, um, Gerslauer's forwards, backwards, family coasters in this shaping for the track. Also notice on some of those parts there how large the span is, which is why it's tri-rail track. There we go, got a couple of these little tight corners. Now we're down on the ground and getting ready to finish. Still doing these uh, little break runs here just to keep things moving. They do scrub off some speed. Less uh, tight hills here at the end. Um, nice uh, steep drop here over the water here at the end up into the brakes. So that's a good option also. And there's actually one more because I forgot to talk about this one. Oops. Predator. Oh, come on. Wiener Prodder. Synthesol. This one doesn't actually have a uh, model line or not, but this one is cool in that it is also the most recent one and the only one to open in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, opened uh, July this year. Um, but this one's interesting because it basically takes a compact, almost portable coaster design and just goes up with the thing. It is really, really, really long. Um, I believe this one is actually the longest one of these, so 2,000 feet long. Uh, let's see who's done a video of this one. Um, look at ride review, why not? Just because I think this one is absolutely worth looking at. All right, we will watch Joe Biden because, all right. So let's... Um, Take a look at this one. Then we'll get back to building. This one may be my favorite of the layouts. I I really like this one actually. Um just with how compact it is, it doesn't necessarily look like it's gonna be interesting, but I feel like they've done a nice job in making it unique. So we start out almost fully like a wild mouse really intersperse these big elements like this drop we're about to do. Nice big drop through some theming, not the whole way down, but now we go back to flat corners again. And then after that we're going to get into these steeper diving corners once again, and back to the flat. Now back again to diving corners. A couple of flat wild mouse kind of things here. It really is like an extreme version of a, a wild mouse where you've got the, the standard stuff just like this with these steep big drops interspersed throughout. And it just keeps on going. Means I'm sure they can run a massive amount of trains if they want to do, which makes sense in Prater Park with the amount of capacity that they need to do. But <clears throat> that's pretty cool. So definitely worth the worth the look as far as uh, those go. So let's um let's jump back in and we'll do one more. I almost kind of want to do one like Tiki Waka more so, but you've got a lot of um, a lot of space with that one. Yeah, I, that's a hard thing to recreate in the game because I feel like you need to use the diagonal corners for that, and with the size of the individual car that you're using for this, it just doesn't. I, I don't know. It just doesn't quite work as well not for the whole thing but nonetheless let's um limit. we'll go a little bit taller with this one i do this one at 12. we'll call this one 15 just to do a little bit more with it but i, I like to try and keep it compact if you can Get 
under that, which we can. And actually, that may let us do some weird banking. Try to get behind and do some weirdness like that. Let's take our lift hill, uh, boost that up to six. One of the key things, though, is going to be uh, there's more vehicles. Um, you could do, let's see here. I'm not those mine cars. You could do. Could do these mine cars. I don't quite know if it would look quite the same, but let's see how they go. I've seen uh, the two bench wooden coaster trains done before. Uh, challenge with this one is you don't have the sprites for the banking, so wood coaster is can, it can be an option there. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of um, custom vehicles also, but I know we. Uh, Trying to avoid those with, uh, actually, this is the one that's going to look the best, is the Gerslauer uh, one, which I understand is custom, but. Uh, you could do the second car from a loop and coaster train if you wanted to, so you could do a quick shoestring and separate that out. I worry that it doesn't have quite enough profile to the front. Actually, I think this is what we're going to use is one for these. So let's uh, our brakes on here. Crossover move. We're at eight there, which probably means we're not gonna fit. Let's um see what that looks like at eight speed. And you kind of look at these sequence or these elements as you kind of do a one element sequence and then you put the brake. Nice little drop here, little slow corner. We're diving one up to the blocks here. We can go ahead and put mouse, not steeplechase, steel wild mouse. Kind of wrap those wild mouse corners as a potential option. This added height gives us a little bit more ability to play around with things. I do like the idea of the directional changes such as this. 
Well, we are kind of mirroring what we did on that first drop. I kind of like the overall look. And that's sort of an interesting idea. Let's see how we take it. You get a little bit of that slow flat corner, probably a little bit too slow, but um, to be honest, I like it well enough that we can we can be okay with that. That was at six, so we know we're not going to make it back to that. Ooh, will be in the way there. It'll be in the way there also. And the biggest thing is trying to just make sure that the sequences work with each other. So like we've got our little switchbacks here kind of nested in between. We've got this flat corner here. Um, this section kind of mirrors this section, I think is a good, a good look. actually come up get to try get up to six actually one more time this will let us get those little steep drops that we had looked at earlier See how that takes it as far as speed goes. Ah, shoot. Reset. going there ease it into the brakes which is probably a little bit too slow but we're we're okay with that and we are gonna have these nice easy overtakes that was a little bit too slow there so that means we will lower this one and if we wanted to do a last one we could hey hydro how you doing We are building Gerslauers today, tonight. Put one more in there. I think that's actually going to let us get a diving drop in there, which we can. And not cross over though. This break run location is likely to change.
Let's see how we're looking up until this helix. I just want to make sure it's going to make that last break run there. Obviously, this layout is quite a bit larger than the 20 tiles that uh, you have to fit into for Dirkling's contest, but I don't really care because I'm not building for that one right now. So it's just some ideas as to how you can manage these rides. This is not going to make not at Darn. Let's instead. All right, a flat corner here. Hate the clearances on the helices because they can absolutely make some of those tight, tighter corners such as that, but sometimes they can be just difficult about it. So we are going to do it anyway. Do on this one, maybe that's barely joking. Uh, almost want to just put another block here early, which we can do, and we'll we'll just do this. And that way we've completed the duties of adding in some kind of helix element like that. Then we'll call that a day. One, two, three, four across. We can do a variety of things, I suppose, with this um, break run here. Go slowly picking up speed. 20 miles an hour. It sure feels a lot slower than that. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Ugh. For these for these um, heights of rides and the momentum that a single car is going to get you, helixes are actually terrible for this kind of ride. Like, it's really not something you want to look at. Uh, but, sometimes that is the option. We'll do this, and then we'll end with a yeah, nice little unbanked corner there. Get ourselves some sea wild mouse corner lock break station. Have a look at this. Give it one, two, three, four, five. Let's see how it looks. Mostly we'll see if we got our blocking right, which I'm going to hazard a guess that we did because our lift hill is so long that it's going to stretch out. I mean, really, your spacing your spacing comes into just how much, how long the lift hill is. So we're halfway at the lift hill and clear block one. Might even come close to being clear block two before we get off. Nearly. But that's pro that's not too bad spacing between one and two. And it's good that, that block two is as far back as it is because we're gonna need all that to get through three here. I just barely. Block four comes early because it's just those two hills in between, but that's fine. That's not an issue. And then we're just really not picking up a whole lot of speed there on the end. But nonetheless, not too bad of an option. 
Um, so that's another good look at a uh, what a Gerslauer bobsled can be. Let's um, give this one a color scheme also. Uh, make it that blue that Tiki Walker's got. And uh, throw in some of these guys. And actually, one of the things I want to do build it in valid heights. In my opinion, that looks a little bit better. I don't know what you guys think, but if you build it on the half tile, I think it looks a little bit better than the full. And with this instance here, I would just consider not transitioning to any coaster on something weird. So, like, go through here and hide all of these pieces here. Then it looks a little bit more consistent. It's going to look stupid a little bit because you've got two entirely different track gauges at two separate heights. Um, but on the whole, I don't think it's a bad way to look at it. This here. All right, so those two are my examples. And uh, I think we went through all the lists, so there's a lot of variety out there to be had. I think your your key stuff to remember are block break positioning, uh, variation between flat stuff and bank stuff and diving corners, directional changes, and just managing that speed, um, because I think the speed is gonna be the biggest challenge. Now, since you've got a tight plot of land to work with, um, your coaster is going to be a little bit more compact, a little bit more, a little bit tighter. So I think that's a, a good consideration for these guys as you go forward building them. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all there is on this. I guess one last comment. I, I've built all of these brake runs with just the block brake here at the end. You probably want to put a second one in there and just open it up to whatever high speed so it doesn't affect it. But um, just so it looks a little better, consistent, I suppose. But uh, on the whole, not not uh, too much of an issue regardless. But anyway, I will upload this to the YouTube channel. If you don't follow the YouTube channel already, um, it's uh, in my description or my profile down below. Uh, so go take a look at that. And then if you want to support the channel otherwise, feel free to follow and subscribe on Twitch for more of these kind of streams. Uh, I will do more of these one-off streams here in the future because I think those are also as interesting as the longer Andrelzik Amusement Academy streams. But anyway, hopefully you guys will uh, tune in for next time. And um, until then, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thank you very much for coming by and uh, have a nice evening. See you guys later.